the live stream. Preparing the live stream. Okay. So we are live on YouTube. Ooh, baby. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the record button. We can get going. Vital marketing updates you need to know. All right. Just in case you forgot. You're the one that came up with it. But I wrote it down. All right. Anytime. All right. Until it got it. Okay, are we ready? Let's do this thing. All right. So we're gonna say vital marketing. What is it? What do we say? Vital marketing updates you need to know. Vital marketing updates you need to know. All right, here we go. In five, four, three. On today's episode of Video Marketing Madness, we're gonna talk about some vital marketing updates that you need to know. And speaking of need to know, you need to know how to shoot better video when you're out doing things for clients or for your business. And that requires getting a few cool little things that are going to help you to look even better. That would be microphones that'll make you sound better. That'll be lights that'll make you look better. That'll be stands that'll keep your videos nice and stable. And where would you get all these great things? Well, we get them at our good friends, Movo, and you can do the same by heading over to racelinks.com slash Movo and pick up some of the great things that they have available for you. Tons of microphones, stands, lights, and everything else that could even turn your smartphone into a full shooting rig. So check it out today at racelinks.com slash Movo. And with that, let's hit the music. And it's the radio show about video, video marketing madness with Ray, the video guy, and I'm Steve Sleeper. And we just got a whole bunch of updates here. And and uh, Ooh, I'm going to I'm going to kind of start them off with, in what I think is order of importance. And Ray will take it from there. So this is one that's been out for a while. YouTube enables linking between shorts and long <laughs> long form videos. Talk about that one, right? Because you know, yeah. That. So this is um, this is something that I am really, really excited about because you may recall back a few weeks ago we talked about how Facebook has this for Reels. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a, a short video a reel and you've got a big video that you want to link to it, you could actually say short video goes to the big video. Well, in YouTube, they didn't have that. And I said, man, I know it's probably coming soon, but I really hope they do that. And now it looks like that's going to be happening. So I'm very excited about that because, for instance, uh, one of our clients, the, the Nerve Doctors, we do shorts that are related to the, every time we do a big video, we do a short video that goes along with it. And we try to use that short video to drive more traffic. But Steve, do you know what I get every time we put out one of those shorts? On, on YouTube? Mm hmm. Uh, how, how many views? No, no, no. What I get from people in comments. Oh, geez. I don't know. I haven't looked at them in a while. What do you get? So we get, well, that's great, but we need more information. Where's a real video oh, on it? Oh, okay. Uh, hey, dummy, yeah. it's in the description. Click on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we were doing it that way. But in shorts, people don't see the, 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 the links in the text. They don't see that. Yeah. It's just not something that's up front in the off. video. So the ability to jump back to the main video is going to make a world of difference with that. Like I just this morning, somebody's like, I didn't like this video. It barely gave any information. And then it was over. I'm like, well, it's a short and yeah, we link yeah. to the big video. So go watch the big video about the exact same thing answers all your questions. So uh, hopefully this will solve a lot of those issues. I'm sure for a little while, People will not know how to do that, and they still won't see it, and they'll still complain. <laughs> but hopefully, we'll. Uh, yeah, it'll, no, over you, time you can bank on that. I'm going to read uh, the search engine land says how it works. This may be some helpful information too. Uh, you you basically touched on it, but let's read this. Creators can add a link to any short they post using a new option now available in YouTube Studio. Once a link has been input, inputted, it will then appear 
in the description of the short video. I have a hard time finding descriptions of the short videos, just FYI. They're, they're, it's, it's not easy. That's the problem. Accompanied by a play button encouraging viewers to tap through the linked content. Once they hit that button, viewers will be redirected to the link video, expanding their YouTube experience with your channel. And it now I'm I'm looking at this uh this sample that they give. It's a screenshot, and it looks like it's actually on the screen where you're watching it. So, you know, she does a video called A Breath of Fresh Air, and then there's something you know, where you have the name of, you know, on the video where you have the name of the channel and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm talking about. And then underneath that, it's there's a little play button and a breath of fresh air. And you can yeah. hit that and it goes to your long form. So that's really cool. That's what I wanted. To well, hear. let's hope that uh, people catch on to that pretty quickly so that we can start to uh, take major advantage of that. So. That That'll would be, be very, exciting. That, and, uh, that would be very helpful. I may do some tests with the train channel, see what happens. There um, you go. There you go. Um, train channels, man. Train something channels. I am really excited about. Ray and I have uh, closed a couple of deals with attorneys on uh, Ray doing the consultant, consulting, teaching, coaching on, on uh, doing YouTube videos on their channel. And uh, just briefly, what Ray does is optimize their channel, optimize their videos, coach them on how to do the videos, all that kind of good stuff, you know, doing everything you're supposed to do to get views. And there's two things that we want to accomplish. A, uh, we, well, we, in all cases, we want to get views, but w one option would be to get them more leads. And we have an attorney in Overland Park whose competitor does a ton of videos and he's getting way more business than him. So that's why he wants to do it. The other is maybe get them monetized. Maybe it would be a second source of income. So um, the, 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 the first option is uh, our friend Adam in Overland Park, Kansas, who's a DUI defense attorney. And he, he basically wants it for, for the leads. But uh, once he gets through that, uh, we can talk about other options. Now, what happened with Adam is he said, okay, I'll get some videos done. Ray told him what to do. We got the video. First of all, it was horizontal. And, and second of all, he, he was just stiff. I mean, hello, I am Adam S. I am here to tell you about, and that's not him at all. I mean, we, you know, whenever we do a Zoom call with him, he's just, just a regular guy, real fun. And so, you know, I said, look, you know, Adam, why don't we do this? A, we will do a Zoom with you. You put us on your laptop on, on you know, like the side desk or something like that or on the side of the desk. And then Ray will coach you through what to do, setting up your phone, you know. So he's recording stuff on his phone, but we're in the office with him on Zoom. And that does a couple of things. That that just feels like he's he's not the Lone Ranger. We can kind of help him loosen up. We can, you know, if he's if he's kind of tight, we can crack a few jokes. But then he's going to have the confidence of Ray coaching and teaching him. the The other thing that's really good about this is that attorneys have a hard time get finding time to do things like this. But if you schedule a Zoom call, they're forced to do it. And you know, Friday afternoons work out real well for them. So we may have busy Friday <laughs> afternoons. Which we've so. learned very quickly. It seems everybody's yeah. like, well, how about Friday afternoon? <laughs> so I'm I'm pretty uh pretty excited about that, right? And we do our first one tomorrow. And I, I think this is uh this is an exciting uh new option that we've developed for growing our our you know our YouTube business with attorneys because I think it's it, I think it's a tremendous amount of value that they can just grasp onto right away. Now, of course, the uh, you know the the optimizing the videos and the channel and and getting it monetized is all important, but we got to take that first step first. Yep. Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think it's going to work well. Um, you know, I was telling Steve, and I wish I could remember. You know, we're just going to do it, like I said, through a, a Zoom call while he's mm -hmm. got his phone there and whatnot. But there was a a company that called me a while ago and I'm talking like maybe six months or a year ago. Yeah. You mentioned that. And they, they had, you know, this in a very structured 
<clears throat> program that they'd put together. And I wish I could find the contact info for them because it was great. It, what it did was it did exactly what we're doing, but in one, you know, package. So we could literally, we, we could literally be watching what the, the uh, attorney or the client is doing and communicate with them. Okay. You know, oh, move to your left a little bit. And mm -hmm. then we could control his phone and hit record, hit stop. But what was great about it was it would record to the phone itself. So it wasn't yeah. trying to record what he was doing through Zoom or, or something like that, where the quality, you know, takes a big hit because it's going through the internet and it's going compressed and, and whatnot. It was actually still recording on the phone itself. And then in the end, the phone would send the video, the full video to us at the end. So it was very cool. But of course, at the time I was like, yeah, you know, I'd love to lo learn more about this, but you know, I don't have a use for it right now. And now that we kind of do. I, boy, if you can find that, it that would be anymore, great. So. My guess is it's going to pop back up at some point. Well, and my guess is it's probably very expensive versus just doing a Zoom call. So oh, good point. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. that. That might decide whether it's really worth it or not. So, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because Steve, I don't know if he, I don't know if Steve is, has told anybody and I don't know if Steve knows or not, but uh, Ray is very cheap. Yes. Oh, no, I knew that. I knew that. I, I, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, hey, here's one. Ooh, I think these are all search engine land, just FYI. Um, YouTube tests new anti ad blocker pop up with countdown timer. <laughs> Do you have you heard about that? No, I have not. Right now, the warning is being served to select groups of people around the world that have ad blockers enabled, which I don't. Okay. When they sign into their accounts to watch content, all videos will be blocked unless they enter, change their settings to uh, disallow ad blockers or they sign up for YouTube premium. And, uh, in, in, and I, you know what, I'm going to put the links to all these stories in the show notes, but they, uh, they, they, they show the warning. They have a screenshot of the warning that basically said ad blockers are not allowed on YouTube. It looks yeah, like that's, that's interesting. Certainly. Um, and you know, the thing is, is uh, ad blockers, they're not illegal. Just so you know, they're not illegal because it's your browser, but they don't have to, you know, allow you to watch the content either. So they can, do anti-ad blocker stuff. So, you know, it's a game. It'll go back and forth. It's just like, uh, it's kind of like, you know, uh, radar detectors and, and you know, speed radars. <laughs> you know, the cops are the cops are trying to catch speeding. You're using this, the radar detector to slow down. And, you know, it's a back and forth game. And then they come out with radar, you know, radar systems that don't get detected as easily. And then they come out with a new radar detector that detects the new radar system. So you just... <laughs> It's just going to be a constant game. Somebody's going to come out with a super ad blocker that's going to get by this, and then they're going to try and do it again. And, you know, it's just going to keep going like that. So what can you do, you know? I I, I don't know, but I thought that was interesting because I saved it in my folder. So yep. worth noting. Um, Google is rolling out an algorithm update today. It's going to take the next couple of weeks. And one of our uh, one of our software providers that we use um, said, "Don't change anything for now. Just keep everything the same. You don't want to ramp anything up because you're you know they'll see it. It's going to be detrimental during the algorithm changes. Um, well, it won't be detrimental if you're not doing anything dumb. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. I shouldn't say that. That's not necessarily true. But for the most part, if you're not doing anything shady and and dumb, it shouldn't hurt you too much. So. Yeah. Which is basically or it could what help I. You. Well, it could. And they said, you know, content that wasn't doing well before may do well now. And, and then they've been the making a lot of changes. Them. I don't. I don't know if you know this, Steve, but they. Um. A lot of people have been complaining about it, and everything is. They're cracking down on reviews quite a bit now. And like reviews that they don't trust, they're they're pulling. So people that have, oh. you know, 20, 25 star reviews, all of a sudden, like they've got 17 because three of them were like, eh, I don't know about this one. Well. So like I've got some clients, they've got, you know, they've it, it, similar to uh, I don't I, I don't dare want to, to say this, but I'm going to say uh, similar to like Yelp, 
Mm -hmm. So I've got like one client, he's fairly new with all this Google business profile stuff. And I'm trying to get him to get more reviews. And he only had like, you know, three reviews or whatever. And now he's only got one. Now, if you look in the reviews, I can see all three, but it shows that he, but if you look at the main thing, it says one review, even though he's got three, and then the other two are there, but they're not. That's gotta be an, that's gotta be an algorithm thing. Don't you think? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. It's something that changed recently. A lot of people were suddenly complaining that, oh man, gosh, I lost reviews. Well, that's what happens sometimes, you know, which reminds me when we did our call yesterday with attorney, Randy Randall, um, he, um, and, and, and he likes to talk. I mean, the guy yes, likes, he it, but, but he's, he is a people guy. He is absolutely a P pe- he loves people. And um, he's a former state trooper, so he's got that heart of a servant thing, despite what you think of the cops, you know. If, and then he shoots you. Then he shoots you. And <laughs> um, but despite what you think of the cops, you know, at least eighty percent of them have a heart of a servant. They're there to protect and serve. So, uh, but we we spent a couple hours with him yesterday, talking with him about all kinds of stuff. Poor, and, poor um, Steve. Steve. Steve is texting you in the middle of it. Wrap it up. Come on. I know, I know. and Ray loves it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm ADD too. So that, <laughs> that was part of it. But, uh, but you know, the thing was, is Randy kept going where Ray wanted him to go. So, I mean, that was the advantage of it. But one of the things that he talked about, cause I do his GMBs right now and he loves what I'm doing for him. And he will get calls from people that, don't necessarily need his services. Okay. Because he runs, he runs local service ads. Totally and, common with, with those yeah. types of businesses. And, you know, he's pretty much a DUI defense lawyer, a criminal defense lawyer. And so he'll get somebody that needs a divorce. And so, and so instead of just saying, no, I don't do divorce and hang up, he'll talk him through it and spend some time talking to him and kind of give them a direction in which to go. And right. then they'll, then they'll say, well, hey, man, you spent so much time with me. Can, can I pay you for this? He goes, no, man, just leave me a five-star review on Google. Yeah, there you go. Oh, leave me a review on Google. I don't know that he says five-star. And just, you know, give me a good review on Google, I think is what he says. Um, and then what he sends him is that link to the, oh, I forget what that's called, but it brings up the review box when they yep. click on it. And I said, you know, I was wondering how you got that much five-star love. And uh I'm pretty sure he didn't say he asked for five stars. He just said, leave me a good review. So that's. uh, There's there's nothing wrong with asking for a five-star review. Oh, you can ask for five stars. Sure. You're just not supposed to incentivize people to do that. So he probably is asking for five stars. I was was all mixed up. Uploading videos to the Google business profile. (laughs) Okay. Um, Google hates me. And I, and I've been doing a lot of stuff with Google business profiles for, uh, eight, uh about five years, six years, something like that. Wow. And that's so, like, that's like three name changes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And, um, they, they, with a recent algorithm update, there's just a lot of things they don't let me do as a manager. So they've got me shut down on a b- bunch of profiles from even uploading photos. Because, you know, honestly, quite frankly, I was kind of uploading. I mean, I had maybe 10 photos, but over the course of time, that's what I was uploading. So they shut me down on those. The other day with with Adam, I tried to upload a a video, the video that he did that uh, we can't use on YouTube because it's horizontal. Well, we can still, we're still going to use it, but it's it's just what what we were originally. And it was was vertical. It It was supposed to be horizontal. It was was supposed to be, yeah, I I got it mixed up. It was vertical. Uh, Ray's going to use it somehow. I don't know. But I, tr- I, what I did is I did transcribe that and use the copy in the GMB. And uh, by the way, I interchanged Google business profile with GMB. Don't be confused. Um, the terms. Um, and so I, I transcribed it. I, I did a GMB post out of it. I did not upload it to YouTube because, um, of, you know, Ray wants to mess with it. And and that's it, it, that's in Ray's sphere, 
but I did make an AI video out of it and backlink everything. And then when I tried to upload the video, it wouldn't let me do it. So I'm going, okay, what's the matter? So learn more. Well, it needs to be a minute and 70, less than 75 meg. I do that. They won't let me upload it. I spent the morning trying to figure that out. I finally gave up. And how, then, how long was that video? I can't remember. So uh, it was three minutes and I cut it down to a minute. You know, so, oh, so you did cut it down to a minute. Okay. Yeah, I did cut it down to a minute and uh, just took the heart, of, you know, the, the the heart of it out and used that. <laughs> that's that's kind of gross. But um, so, you know, I'm, I'm talking with Ray about this all morning and he's, you know, he's like, oh, geez. So yesterday he texts me and says, well, I was able to upload a video. And my response was, uh, Google hates me, you know, but you were, yeah. uh, so I, I can't upload videos. Um, to accounts where they haven't prevented me from uploading photos. There are accounts where they prevent me from uploading photos, but you're able to upload videos. So it's just nuts. It's just crazy. Well, and, and like I said, the, the two videos that I uploaded were just over a minute each. One was like a minute six and one was like a minute 16. And um, they, it let me upload both of them, but it did, it did reject one of them. One of them it, yeah. it took and one of them it said rejected. Don't know why they were both review videos. So it's not like the, the content is really any different other than the, the person who reviewed them. But uh, yeah, one of them, it, and, and I, I want to look and see, I don't know if it's the, which one it rejected. It might be the minute six they allowed and the minute 16 was too long. Maybe I have to look uh, and see. I'm not sure which one was which. Okay. But, well, maybe that was it, but so that could yeah. be it. But yeah, one, one, they rejected one. They didn't go figure. But, but, you know, I, let, let, okay, let's say it was because it was too long. Let's just say that they're letting Ray upload videos. Why are they not letting me upload videos? <laughs> well, you Steve, know, to a you new never account. know. But I do have a good story about that, which I may have told on here before. Is that the so, 300 videos you uploaded? <laughs> so back um, when, <laughs> when I had my office down in the other town here, and I stood up a, a, a Google business profile for um, you know, locally for Ray, the video guy, uh, which is still, it's still there. I don't really use it, but it's still there. And um, <laughs> I said, Hey, well, they allow me to upload pictures. They allow me to upload videos. I got thousands of videos and images. And so I said, I'm going to make this the busiest Google business yeah. profile ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you so I mass you broke uploaded the profile. Yeah. I mass uploaded hundreds of images and, and literally hundreds of videos. And to this day, now this, mind you, this is uh, at least four years ago. Oh, it was 10. To this day, if I log into the back end of that, it is still trying to upload those videos. And I cannot upload a photo or a video. I did speak to somebody at Google years ago, and she, <laughs> she kind of was like, you know, scratching her head. And she says, she goes, yeah, she goes. I, I don't know what to do with this. I don't, I don't know how to fix this. She says, you're, and she gave me a number. I don't remember what the number is, but there's only supposed to be like a mass, a ma max of like a hundred videos and, and, and photos or something like that. And I right. uploaded like 400 videos and like right. 400 images at the same time. Right. And so to this day, it's still trying to upload. If you go in there, you can look in the back end, you can see it doing the little, do you know, little circle, circle, like spinning it's circle. and it's been four years. So. Yeah, I, okay, I so so when did you move from California to Georgia? Was that four years? So ago? I moved from California in 2017, but I moved here to this office back in 2020. Yeah, but Snellville, your original office was in Snellville when you moved. Right, so that's that, where that's that, where I that, that, blew that could be six years old. You know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, well, yeah, it's probably like four or five. It's not important. It's just you but, know, but I'm I'm just kind of OC. All right, let's see. There's that. Oh. I and and I this may have been something you told me before, but I am writing blogs and and, and uh, Google business profile updates on a weekly basis about DUI defense. And boy, I'm glad there is AI because before I was really st struggling with it. <laughs> now my biggest issue is not so much struggling with it, but I just get tired of it. And so I thought, well, I've been using chat GPT, you know, I'm kind of, my eyes are starting to roll in the back of my head. Uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to try Bard. Okay. 
And the copy's different with Bart. It's kind of, you know, it kind of refreshes me. It makes me feel better. You know, I'm not, I'm, 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 uh, it's just a nice change of pace. One thing I have noticed is with chat GPT, I was getting more co copy than I got with Bart. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, and so, you know, I, but I, I do go into Bart and say, well, expand on this point and expand on that point and stuff like that. Um, just an observation, you know, um, yeah, and, I was, and, I was, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I was watching a, a YouTube video the other day comparing the two because, you know, that's how cool I am. And um, that was the thing is in most of the things, chat GPT, quote unquote, one, it was, you know, came out better. There was a couple of things that didn't. But the um, one of the biggest ones was, yeah, Bard was very fact straight boom, here's facts and that's it. There was uh -huh. hardly any creativity or, you know, writing going on there. Whereas with chat GPT, it was, it could be a lot more flowery and, and, you know, creative and things like that. And probably a little less factual. Yeah. So that's oh, kind of the yeah. difference between the two, but. Yeah. You know. Okay. Well, and yeah, I mean, I, I do fact check all these. Now I've been writing for attorneys, or DOI defense lawyers for so long. I know you can't say specialize and chat GPT love to say specialize. They specialize in DUI defense. Can't say that. And there were other things there too, you know, that, um, I, I, you know, take me too long to explain it, but it, there were other things there too. I had to change, but, uh, but the, the thing is it gave me a starting point at prime, the pump. That was so good. It is so dang important. So, I'm going to try a bunch of other ones, but yeah, I'm going to use Bard for a while and that works uh, just fine. Now that brings me to my next one. And you and I were talking about this a, yeah, a lot yesterday. Um, what's it called? Synthesis AI, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a, a talking head uh, and, and a voice and you just put your copy in and it spits it out. And they've been working on a new interface and they rolled out the interface yesterday. I couldn't get my old interface. My old interface, I had spent like $500 for unlimited credits. And so I told Ray about it and he told them about it. And they get back to me and said, well, here's the old interface login. You can, you can still use that. So they took care of that. The new interface login, I'm going to have to learn it. It's and cool. I, is it? Okay. I will learn it. And, and when I say cool, what, what I mean is, and, and I, when I say cool with that, I don't, I don't necessarily mean like functionally, it's so much better. No, it, it's, it's cool in that design wise, they actually did some fun stuff with it. it they did. Cool. I saw that. Yeah. I saw it with, with little. We haven't seen later. that. And it's been so long since we've seen, you know, creative interfaces with things. You know, if, I don't know if you remember, Steve, do you remember the, the program? Uh, it was called uh, Goo or Super Goo. Yeah. Yeah, I do. And it, basically, you could put a picture of a face in there, and you could make the eyes bigger, and yeah, you could do all sorts yeah, of crazy that. Photoshop okay. yep, like things. Yep, yep. But I the interface so. was like really cool with fun buttons, and mm -hmm. we just we don't see that anymore. And well, I really love that video toaster. Back in the day, used to do oh, a lot of that. It was really cool. Yeah. Like the interface was different, and the buttons were kind of cool looking, and you know, um, and they kind of did that with this, and I, I really liked that. I thought that was a lot of a lot of fun. Yeah, and I saw that. The other thing is they've got templates for the industry, too. So if it's medical, you just click on medical, and then the guy looks like a doctor and, and stuff like that. So And, I, and I it's will... neat because, the, you know, it's for those of you who don't know what this means, they, they use what they call humitars, which is they've got pictures of actual human beings, actual people. And when you put in the text and you pick the voice that you want to say the text, you put it in there, the the picture of the person looks like it's pretty much looks like a, a real person and their lips move and they talk and they move their head and, you know, all that kind of stuff while they're doing the video. So it's very cool. Um, mm. Is it, you know, indistinguishable from a real person? No, you can you can still, you know, there's that uncanny valley thing going on there where you can tell it's, you know, AI generated or whatever, but it still works good enough for what we're trying to do. Definitely. Well, and, and what I noticed is, um, at least in the old interface, and I've got to learn the new one, but when they're using their hands, you know, when they're talking, first of all, their hands look massive. And then, <laughs> it, it boy, that there's nothing like screaming AI when, you, when they do something like this. 
And if you're um, watching the YouTube um, live here, they can see my hands moving. Uh, if you're, of course, listening to the audio, you can't. Um, I noticed there is one uh, in the old interface where this gal doesn't move her hands at all. She's one of the most late, the latest ones. It's harder to tell it's AI. It, it, yeah. you know, so I, I noticed that. There was one I messed with the other day and it was um, it actually had a, it was a guy and he was on an, an actual background, like a real background. It wasn't, um, you know, green, you know, it wasn't just his pasted onto a thing. It was actually shot on the background already. And he did it and it was pretty good. But th the only issue was like the movement, cause he would do, he would move his head and things like that. And it was almost like too much. Cause he, you know, he'd be like, Hey, so I just wanted to tell you, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and he's nodding yeah. his head all the time and turning his head. And I'm like, nobody does that. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's, it looked real except the movement was just like, and yeah, yeah. nobody would quit. I mean, a little bit of that would have gone a long way. And it was just, it was just too much. Well, that he was the hand about. movement wasn't always appropriate, you know, like if, if I'm talking and I make it a point, you know, and I'm pointing at the camera, you know, Ray, I want you, you know, and I point at the camera, then that's appropriate. But there'd be times when they move their hands and you go, why are they moving their hands? So, um, you know, hopefully they've taken care of that. Yesterday, I couldn't figure it out. And a couple of years ago, I had bought a seat on Vid Voicer from you just as a backup, just in case I ever needed it, you know, because I'm really kind of up against the wall every week getting these blogs and uh, Google business profiles done. And so I went over to Vid Voicer. I love learning new things, and but I have to be forced to learn new things. And so I did yesterday, tried all kinds of stuff. Their slideshow thing works really well for, for me. And um, if, if um, you, your your link is still out there, it's raythevideoguy.com forward slash vidvoicer or backslash vidvoicer. It's backslash vidvoicer, I think. But um, if, if you want to buy it, and I'll put that link in the description. But uh, I spent some time learning on it. I did a few whiteboard videos. And then I did uh, a few slideshow videos. And the slideshow videos, are, well, both are, are, are really good what's my point here? I'm a little burned out on doing the AI videos and, and my clients have been not really complaining about them. They're like, Hey, if you say people are okay watching these things, that's fine. And I know you're just using it to build links. And as I always say, I almost hope people don't watch them, you know, but uh, uh, they, they do show up. I mean, sometimes they show up and, and get 50, 60 views. So, um, I I was kind of ready to try something else and I was forced to do it. And I was really impressed with VidVoicer. I just I like the sl slideshow videos. I liked the whiteboard videos, which is basically just type on the, well, you know, white type blue background. Sure. Um, but uh, that would be good for, you know, like sales presentations and stuff. So, um, and, and what I did with, with the attorneys is, um, uh, I went in and just grabbed everything from their Google business pro business profile. That's where they have the most pictures. And, and then I went to Pixabay and got a bunch of, uh, you know, pictures from there about lawyers. And then you just number them one through five with a logo at the end. And, and you, you have to cut the audio separately. You have to get the, the, they call it box, but it's AI voice and they sound good. And then you just marry the two and it's, pretty good so I, I just want to talk about that i spent yeah, yeah. all no, day there's, there's a lot of a lot of good stuff with it there's a lot of bad ones out there too like i i wrote some emails a little while back about some that were really really bad um there was one that <laughs> there was one that um it was there was one that supposedly would make the ai voices sing Thing. And I was like, oh, we could do that for like jingles and make our own jingles and things. Yeah. Like that. Oh, my gosh. It was so terrible. I mean, it was such a lie. It was so awful. It was the singing was rap, quote unquote rap, which would just be the AI voice going, yes, you want to do this and you want to do that. And this is going to be the one that you did. I mean, it was so terrible and it didn't match the the song and they would rap for, you know, 13 seconds and then you'd have the rest of the music by itself. I, it was oh. just awful. And it just sounded stupid. It was stupid. And they were trying to sell this thing by saying, Oh, you could be like, you know, Janet Jackson and Madonna and, and Michael Jackson. <laughs> like, Oh yeah, you're really going to be 
you know, a multimillionaire top 40 musician by doing this crap. Are you kidding me? And then there's another one, Steve. And um, it had some great samples. They had samples of like um, voiceovers doing things for like network television style things and everything. And I went through it all. and, And yeah, the reality was they were just stealing bits from TV and putting it on there as quote unquote examples which was real voiceover artists doing real voiceovers uh-huh. for real stuff that was on TV. And that was there. And the actual product was awful. Like it did what it said in that it would, it would do the voiceovers with the voices, but you know, there's different levels to the voices. Some of them are older and terrible. Some of them are really good. Some of them are getting to the point where you can barely tell if it's an actual person. Mm-hmm. And this was some of the older ones that just, you could tell immediately that it was a, an AI voice and it was going to read it like this. And that was, and, and, you know, they're showing stuff from like, like, I think it was a voiceover, like for a promo on TNT, the the network. And that Uh was their example. Um, But that was done by a real voiceover person and, and really produced by professionals. And yet they're trying to say that that was like their thing. And, and it was an absolute scam. It was an absolute scam. Wow. Um, You know, well, you know what the moral of that story is. Um, if you're doing you make affiliate- a lot of money by scamming people because they made they made a lot of sales and they didn't have a lot of refunds. Really? Well, you know, because in the end, it kind of did what an an a voice an AI voiceover thing should do. Did they did they cheat and and steal? You know, examples. Yep. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you needed a voiceover done. It did that. So people were probably like, eh, so good enough. Yeah, okay. good enough. Well, but my moral of the story is that before you sell an affiliate pro- product, check it out. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've got well, one. Well, had check this out other than buying it because I bought it Did to you? check it out on the inside. If you didn't buy it and do that, yeah. you'd think it's yeah, amazing. But you- you typically check you check out products unless you know and trust somebody and you know. Oh yeah, I'm, I always you. do. Yeah I've, yeah, I've got one in front of me right now that I'm I'm testing. I, I've heard so many people complain about uh, X Y Z company. Just anything comes down the pike, they send out an email about it. Uh, I had one company that I bought something from, and and uh, they they were sending me five emails a day, you know, with product, and I know they weren't checking it out. And then they didn't have an unsubscribe link. And I finally had to go to their support thing and say, well, you quit doing that. So, uh, but I know, but that, you know, that's it's tough. That There's so many products that come out. And the thing is, is we, a lot of the products that we deal with are products from very small developers, you know, couple mm-hmm. man teams that are doing cool things that are replicating stuff that the big you know somebody trying to replicate what photoshop is doing in a much more affordable simple thing or what have you and the the problem with that is even though they may come up with something really great and i might say for instance i might say this is amazing and fantastic that doesn't mean that they don't go out of business three weeks later yeah, right, right, you know, right. That's and that's that's kind of the other issue with it is there's a lot of abandonware, a lot of things that are really cool. Yeah, and then oh, I know, I know, yeah. you know, well, and, and unfortunately, I can't control that part of things. So uh, Vid Blaster is still out there after what, five years? Uh, Vid Voicer is still there after a couple of years. Uh, so th- that's good to know. And Vid Voicer, it's 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 fairly rudimentary, but it I mean, with what it outputs, but. I don't know. I think you got to be somebody like you or me to see that it's fairly rudimentary. Yep. Um, you know, I like it. It works for what I'm trying to do. And and basically what I'm trying to do is just uh, get the backlinks and. Uh, yeah. Uh, just make and, quick and, videos to get backlinks. Yeah, you know, like backlinks. you said, you don't even care if anybody watches them. Pro- Same type of thing we used to do in the old days. Yeah. I mean, we made ones that we'd want people to watch, but the reality was it did the backlinks. It did the citations and it ranked on page one. And we would put the phone number in the title. So people would just call the phone number mm-hmm. without ever watching mm-hmm. the video. Mm-hmm. And that's, mm-hmm. a, you know, that's. Well, and, and I do get some rank. So kind of, you know, and then some of my attorneys were, my, all of my attorneys were kind of like, you sure these AIs are okay? Well, yeah. Okay. I trust you. So it's kind of nice to kind of get away from AI for a little while. Oh, no. It's kind of nice to do different things. Um, yeah. But um you know, I am able to cross link the GMB with the video and I'm able to put in driving directions and yada, yada, yada. So that, that's kind of cool. Okay. 
my last one for today. Did you hear about this? Now, this comes from Search Engine Journal. Elon Musk confirms removal of content for links in X posts. Um, let's see if let's see the more. Oh, I just had a pop up come up. He's he's making a, a lot of changes lately. Um, it's going to it's going to so if you if you post a, a link. Uh, from a magazine article, for instance, or maybe even my YouTube videos, it's it's not going to po- it's it's just going to post the link to the video, and then what's going to show up is the video with the description, but the uh, the keywords that I used in it, like DUI lawyer Jackson, Mississippi, those are not going to show up. Now, the the I'm using that as an example. They're what they're talking about is articles um, that that you share. So, and what it was doing was uh, it was uh, it was it was eating up a lot of bandwidth on their servers and that's why he's doing it. it's cost saving measure um and uh, of course you know well, this got posted on on their facebook page and people are saying he doesn't have a clue and stuff like that and uh but you know at, at the bottom line when he bought twitter he's losing 35 million dollars a year and he's trying to stop the hemorrhaging you know and well uh, you know the thing is is and people are you know you hear people complaining about this and that oh he's doing this oh he's doing that but you know twitter has had their most profitable quarters since he took over right right so, so you know how do you fight against that yeah well did he lay off a lot of people yes and that's always a sad thing and that's not a great thing no but if you didn't need staff, that many staff, you know, what are you supposed to do? Just keep them on for the heck of it? Yeah. You know, they were way overstaffed mm. and they had way too much. And a lot of their staff was just going around, you know, banning stuff. And yeah. now that they didn't yeah. like. So it's like, you know. Now, do you, the, the, the um, I think this might be more than a rumor, but don't quote me on that. But this is kind of funny. The Babylon Bee, you've seen it, right? Of course. Yeah. It's a Christian satire site. So they were on Twitter and they named Rachel Levine. You know who Rachel Levine is, you know, the tra- yep. trans cabinet member. Um, they named Rachel Levine man of the year. Yeah. <laughs> and they put that on Twitter and Twitter said, no, we're going to suspend you unless you take that down. And Babylon B said, we're not taking it down. And so supposedly, and I, I read this somewhere, that Elon Musk called up uh, Twitter. Who who was the guy that was in charge of Twitter before? The guy that wore the stock. It was uh, Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey. He called him up and he said, come on, that's funny. You know, I mean, where's your sense of humor? We got well, and, and, and a little backstory about that. As far as I understand that particular one, it wasn't. That like people said, oh, that's an inappropriate joke, and they took it down. It was it was taken down because they thought it was a a serious article that was factually incorrect. Well, yeah, but they knew so. Babylon, but but you know what? It, 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 there was an uproar about it. Yes, Babylon B, and this has happened to Babylon B before. They're yeah. they're they're used to it. They you know their 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 tagline the is used to it. You know, Babylon B, fake news you can trust. You know so. <laughs> And um, so, you know, supposedly Elon called Jack and said, come on, put it back up. It is funny. And he refused to do it. So, you know, and and, and Jack said, well, if you don't like it, buy the company. Supposedly <laughs> that happened. Okay. So, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't you know, be surprised and, at all. And I read it on the internet. So, you know, it's got to be true. It's got to be true. <laughs> they don't put anything on there that isn't true. <laughs> but I'm getting excited about this uh, YouTube thing for lawyers that we're doing. I think it's, you know, I think so too. If we can get, you know, 20 or 30 more of them, we'd be uh, doing pretty good with it. Yeah. It's, so if you're it's a lawyer co- and you're out there. Yeah. If you're a lawyer and you're watching this. Because, uh, you know, our goal, and we kind of brushed on it earlier, our goal in a lot of this is not only to just um, use YouTube to boost Google business profiles. It's not just to get people locally to watch and, and, uh, uh, become clients, which obviously we really want, but it's also to try and turn that marketing into revenue. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, you know, with the, I've talked about the the nerve doctors before we do their channel. It was to help get more people drive back to their page and, and make more sales. And now they're getting, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every single month from YouTube. So 
their cost was here every month for that channel. And now they're getting paid this much while still having costs here. Yeah, and right. on top of that, their business has like tripled in their sales. So right, right. And, that's and, our goal. And, and you told that story to attorney Randy and he goes, well, that's kind of different than what I'm going to do. And, and so he lowered expectations and he still wants to do it. So yeah, yep. we're talking about, he just kept selling himself on doing stuff. The more he talked, you know, so, you know, raise a lot smarter than me, raise a lot, that, better, that's raise a lot raise a lot better sales guy than me too, because, uh, he, he started by asking questions and everything. So, um, uh, that was, well, you know, we all have our strengths and weaknesses and, um, I'll tell you what, this is like the, the, uh, the pat yourselves on the back moment here, I guess, but I'll tell you what Steve is really good at. Steve is good at finding the people that we can then talk to. Right. Uh, and, and I'll admit, you know, I think I am pretty, when you get somebody in front of me, I am pretty good at doing the pitch and talking to them. And I am my weakness. I don't want to say I'm terrible at it. Uh, I don't like doing it. And I'm not very good is getting the people there in the first place. If you can get the people to me, I can, I can really do some good stuff. Well, but and, and- not what that I'm, good trying, to get I'm trying to find that sweet spot with the attorneys and I keep working it, you know, back when I was doing banking and of course this is 13, 14, 15 years ago. So things were different, but what, what I did is I carved out about 200 banks I wanted to work with. And I grabbed those in the database and said, stay away. And, um, uh, and 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 why anybody hadn't done this before at my company, I don't know, but they were basically community banks with over a billion in assets. I mean, it wasn't like it was some great secret. And then I would um, call the gatekeeper. I would call the CFO, but the gatekeeper always picked up, and I'd just work with her. And I'd say, you know, I know you get a lot of calls like this, but if I fax you or email something, would you show it to Mr. Lane? And you know, could I get them to fill out a worksheet and see what we can do for you? And you do that enough times. You don't do it too often, but you do it enough times. And you're at some point, you're going to start having things rolling in. And th- that's what happened with me. Um, the I'm trying to figure that out with attorneys. Now, I will tell you, a DUI Lawyers Association is having a meeting in Atlanta coming up. It's it's the big that one. is true, yes, and and we've... and, and Joey's going to be there, so maybe you go there and just meet some people. You know that, that could well. When when is that coming up? I can't remember the date now, but I know it's um, soon, September or October. Yeah, is it? yeah, it's just I think it's September, the end of September, like the nineteenth or something like that. So, um, you know, it the thing we got to be careful. And see, this is the deal. We got to be we can't spend too much money on this. So, you know, it would be hard to make back an investment of me flying in and getting a hotel room and stuff like that. But when it was out in Denver, the wife and I just drove out to Denver and stayed at a cheap hotel. And, you know, we found out. Well, Steve, that you day. are more than welcome to put a tent in my backyard if you want. There we go. You just can't come in the house. You can't come. I have to stay outside. The dog, I, the dog can stay with me, but I can't. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let me, let me see what's going on with, with that. But even if you don't come back with any leads, if you come back and people just know who we are, that's helpful. You know what I'm saying? And you got to get out there. You got to get, known. Yeah, you got to get out there. I, I used to work for a guy that would say um, um, such and such percentage you know, is, uh, is just being out there. So it started off of 40% is just being out and about. And, you know, when, when I left the company, I think it was up to 80%. It just kept getting higher and higher with them. You know, so, 212%. 212%. Getting out there is out in front and of about. people. That's why we like YouTube because that gets you out in front of people. That's our goal that's with right. that too. That, well, yeah, that's the thing. You want to get out in front of more people. That's it. I like it. All right, Steve. Well, I think we've scared people away with all this chatter that we've gone on here for yeah, quite yeah. so long. So yeah. I think it's time that we tell people why we're here and we're here because we want you to make better video. And you know who else wants to make better video with you? Well, that's our good friends over at Movo because they've got the tools that you need. And I'm pointing at the camera this time. You need in order Yes, point at the camera in order to make great video. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about microphones. I'm talking about stands, mini tripods, lights, 
they've got all of that stuff. In fact, one of my favorite things they have are the uh, vlogger packs. And these vlogger yeah. packs, they've got everything you need in there from a really cool rig that you can put on top of your tripod to, with that has uh, connections for lights and, and wireless microphones. And it comes with the microphones, it comes with the light, comes with everything that you need in one package. And they got like seven different versions. It might be more than seven, might be nine now. I don't even know. They got a bunch of different versions of these iVlog kits that have different types of things in depending upon what you need. You can check all of that out and you can even get desktop microphones that you could use for your podcast by heading on over to racelinks.com slash Movo. Check out all the great things that they have. And with that, Steve, I think it's time to hit the music. That's right. Which we will splice in for the audio podcast. I'm going to stop recording right now. And then I'm going to 